The next thing I want to show you is how to change the main jet, which is inside the bowl here. You can do this on or off the scooter. Uh, it just depends if you can reach it very well. Before you start, you'll want to loosen this drain screw here in the bowl and let all the fuel drain out. And then once all the fuel is drained out, tighten that back up so you don't forget it. Then you've got four screws, one in each corner on the bottom of the bowl that you need to remove to take the bowl off. Once those are out of the way, the bowl just comes right off, slides off. Some will have a, like a cork or a paper kind of gasket. And a lot of them have this rubber uh, o-ring kind of seal so you want to be careful not to damage that or lose that replace it if necessary if you've got any leaks coming from the bowl and then your main jet is right here in the center of the carburetor and i've heard some people talk about adjusting it and there is no adjustment to the main jet it screws in and out you always screw it in snug there's no adjustment so to remove it all you do is use a flathead screwdriver unscrew it these are Makuni uh, VM11-22 uh, main jets. Sometimes you'll be lucky and they're labeled with what size they are, but a lot of times in a stock carburetor you won't be so lucky and like this one it has no size whatsoever. You'd have to either use a jet drill or something like that to guess the size or just start to uh, get yourself a selection of jets like I have here and uh, just start swapping and see what ends up working. To put it back you just screw it in, make sure you uh, start it straight, don't strip any threads and snug it up. Don't go over tight on it, just make sure it's snug. Usually if you leave the stock airbox in place and the snorkel in it, you shouldn't have to mess with the pilot jet, but uh, again if you can't get your settings right with the idle mixture screw, you may need to change it. If you have to change the pilot jet, it's inside of this passage right here on this carburetor. It does vary a little bit on some carburetors. Sometimes it sticks out, but on this one it's up inside that passage. So you just use a small flathead screwdriver and unscrew it, and then you should be able to dump it out. There's a couple different styles. I think both are Makuni. You can get replacements for both from Makuni. There's this style here, and I can't remember the model number of this by Makuni, but uh, if you take all the measurements, you'll be able to find the right one. The other style looks like this. It's a Makuni, I think it's a N224.003. I don't know, I'll post it up. So if you have a stock carburetor, you'll wanna take it apart and see what style of pilot jet you have before ordering any replacements for it because it could be different. And to reinstall it, you'll just drop it back down in there, make sure the uh, screw head is facing up. Just drop it back down in there and snug it down with your screwdriver. Uh, don't get it overly tight, but make sure it's snug. Another thing you want to check while you've got the bowl off is your float height. And this is your float right here. Basically when it's uh, down like this or up, depending how you're holding the carburetor, but when it's actually up, when the carb is upright, it, uh, it stops fuel from flowing into the carburetor, into the bowl. When it's low, it'll allow fuel to pass by the needle valve which is down here and I know you can't see it on the video very well but it's down in there it'll allow fuel to pass through the uh, needle valve and fill the bowl float height gets mentioned a lot basically the main time you have a problem with float height if you are getting no fuel into your carburetor or if your carburetor is overflowing with fuel if it's overflowing with fuel then most likely your float is stuck in this position or adjusted too far in that position and it's letting fuel pass by all the time. If you're not getting fuel into the bowl of the carburetor it could be stuck or adjusted too high like you see here and then it blocks off the fuel supply. If you're holding the carburetor upside down like I am there's a little line around here and you're hoping that that line is about parallel with the base of the carburetor. You don't want it to be at an angle either way really. You want it to be about parallel with the base of the carburetor when you're looking at it. You can measure it. I think it's something like 13 millimeters just off the top of my head. But most of the time if you set it so that's parallel then it'll work out. If you set your float height and you still have problems with fuel either too much flowing or not enough then you may want to remove the float and check the needle, the float needle and the seat down there. 
If you can see it on here, there is a pin right there that goes through the float. And what you'll want to do is push that pin out, use a screwdriver or uh, whatever you can get in there, a pick. You'll get that pin, you can push it out a little bit and you'll be able to grab it with your fingers or a pair of pliers. Remove that. You can see the float kind of falls off here. And attached to the float, you should have the float needle hanging on a little clip there. In here, if you can see this, is where your float needle seats. So, fuel comes into the fuel supply here and goes down. The float needle will allow that to pass by until the float gets to the right height then it'll block this off. If anything is wrong with the surface inside of here, then the float needle won't be able to block off fuel flow and it'll just keep flowing and overflow out of the carburetor. And the same goes if you look at the float needle itself. If it's got kind of a rubber tip on it, the black area you can see there, you wanna make sure that's not skinned up or scratched up. Again, any kind of imperfections could mean it doesn't seal and it'll just let fuel pass by all the time. The other thing to note, if you do need to adjust the uh, float height, hopefully you can see there's a metal tab right here that the uh, float needle is hanging on and if you bend that up or down a little bit that'll change the float height so that's how you adjust it you just bend that up or down slightly be gentle with it you don't want to break anything to reinstall the float you want to start off by making sure that this uh, float needle is hanging on that little tab there should just slide over it slides over and it just hangs there then you'll take it and lower the float needle into the seat inside the carburetor that I showed you before and line the uh, the float up with those two mounting tabs. Once you get that lined up you'll take this pin that you removed before slide it through one side of the tab and then push it all the way through. And once you've got that pin in there again check for smooth operation of the float make sure it's about parallel to the base. Then of course when you're ready to put it back together you just have to look at where everything goes into these like see this tube here goes into this receiver just make sure you've got everything lined up properly slide it back into place you'll want to make sure uh, the gasket looks like it's sealing nothing sticking out anywhere and then start all your screws screw it back down snug again again once you get all the screws in then you'll check be sure you've got the uh, drain screw secured so that that's not going to leak when uh, you put the carburetor back on and get fuel in there. <laughs>